Beat is powered by kslsports.com. All right, college football and the NFL just aren't enough. We oh. had to add college basketball to the mix this week. Thanks for staying up with us. Jeremiah Jensen and Sam Farnsworth with you for the next 45 minutes. The latest on the Jazz, we'll have that. You'll hear from the Utes as they prepare for UCLA. And we look back on wins for the Cougars and Aggies, too. All right, the last week for the Jazz it hasn't been for the faint of heart, no doubt. Last Sunday, the Jazz had their second matchup of the early season against the L.A. Clippers, a loss. The team's second straight loss at that point. And coming home for a pair of beasts from the East, Wednesday night, the 76ers were in town. Friday night, the Milwaukee Bucks, two major contenders in the East. The result, two big-time Utah Jazz wins at Vivint Smart Home Arena. Both games going down to the wire. The Jazz holding off a Sixers charge for a two-point win and, of course, the buzzer beater to beat the Bucks. And this team feels like they're just getting going. Um, the scary part is I don't think there's been a game where all – all of us as a team have, have really clicked offensively. We've had defensive games, but we haven't done that yet offensively, and it'll come, and um, I'm excited for that. This, this one is probably probably the best crowd in, in the league. It's not because I, because I play here, but it's just I really, I really mean that. Well, he was Memphis Mike. Now he's Mountain Mike, and just like climbing one of Utah's great peaks, it's been a steep climb for Conley as he adjusts to his new team, but he certainly seems to be finding his groove once again. He's averaged 17 and a half points per game in the two wins this past week. And the second quarter against the Bucks, he was lights out. Sometimes it's, it's bogey's first half, sometimes it's Don. You know, just, you know, I had the hot hand, so uh, we were going at me for a little bit there. And, um, you know, just, just got it going. Oh, my. Mike Conley feeling it. It's, it's different trying to come into a new situation, but they've, they've stayed with it. You know, obviously Mike has struggled earlier, but now he's finding his rhythm, and bojan has been great. And like I said, they're going to continue to keep having games like this. Well, let's go around the association on this Sunday. The Nuggets visiting the Timberwolves. Under a minute to go, Carl Anthony Towns hits the three-pointer. We're tied at 90. This game goes to overtime. Final seconds of OT. Nikola Jokic, the turnaround jumper for the lead and the win. The Nuggets. That's twice he's done that this week. He did it on Friday against the Sixers as well. Nuggets now 7-2. The Blazers trying to snap a four-game streak against the Hawks. Final seconds, Damian Lillard gives Portland the lead with 7.6 seconds left with the finger roll. But the Hawks have an unlikely hero. Kevin Herter, high off the glass, kisses it home, goes to overtime. Kent Bazemore started OT, though, with back-to-back -back threes. Portland, it's their first home win of the season. Raptors in L.A. taking on the Lakers. Fourth quarter, Raptors on the run. Pascal Siakam. Who needs Kawhi in Toronto, right? Woo! Raptors up 106-100. Next time down the floor, Siakam with another finish. The Raptors beat the Lakers on the road, 113-104. The MLS Cup was decided Sunday in Seattle. The Sounders hosting Toronto FC, and the Sounders left no doubt who the best team is. 57th minute, Kelvin Leadrum scores. Then they get some great insurance goals. Victor Rodriguez in the 76th. Raul Rudiaz adds a third in the 90th. And for the second time in four years, the Seattle Sounders get to lift the MLS Cup, this time in front of 69,000 Sounders fans. There's a lot of work to be done, a lot of work. And there's a lot of football left. And, and uh, just see how, uh, see how things unfold. The youths look back at what they've accomplished in the first nine games and look ahead as they chase a spot in the college football playoff. And Bogdanovich pops to the corner. He's open for three. Got it! Boyan Bogdanovich! Can't see it enough. A big shot by Boyan Bogdanovich. We look back at the dramatic win over the Bucks and how that play came to be. Boyan! Don't go anywhere. We got plenty more coming your way. Beat is powered by kslsports.com. Utah Jazz back on the court Monday night in San Francisco as they take on the Golden State Warriors. 
The Jazz should be favored in their next seven games. Yeah, but we can't move on without one more look back at that Boyan Bogdanovich buzzer beater and that big win over the Milwaukee Bucks. Hey, stay close. We got the Bucks and the Utah Jazz. Utah five and three, Bucks six and two. Montecumbo run by Rudy. Find the range, and they need to find it in a hurry. Down only seven of the bucks. Bogey, that's the way to do it. And a drive and a hammer. Oh my God, it's feeling it again. He's getting the helping hand from Royce. He's running downhill. See, look at that. Runs it in, scores it. He saw it just yes, enough. He did. For Royce after a quick rest, he'll take the three. O'Neal up and in it goes. Right here, watch this pass where he says, oh, let me get out the way. That's for you, Royce. Here's Donovan with a floater left hand. The difficulty on that shot. Bring it, Donovan. Donovan stops on a dime, cranks up a three, and his crowd explodes with a three-pointer. Breaks out, drives inside, up and in. What a move. He'll drive inside, kick it down. Pick it up, Rudy. There it is. Hands to Bogey, goes inside, short, bank it home, and the emotion pours out for Boyan as he drops his 27th point of the night. Giannis lowers his shoulder, step back, free throw line, Jay, good. Here's Royce on a drive, hangs it inside, oh! Still, the energy's back. Straight away, Middleton. Like out of a town front. And he hits the deck. Looked like a finger in the eye. And this would be against Milwaukee. O'Neal corner three. Timely. Donovan. Double pumps in traffic. Tough shot. What? Here we go, buckle up. We're tied at 100 after the Jazz owned a 20-point lead in the first half. They'll throw it back to Donovan in the backcourt. Seven to play, down to five, down to four. Here's Mitchell, stolen, and a timeout. George Hill took it right out of the hands of Mitchell with 2.3 to play. They're going to inbound with Sterling Brown. Here we go, 2.3 to play. Middleton can't get the shot off. Travels a call. They're going to have to review this T, obviously, to put time back up on the That's on right. the clock. All right, Joe's going to inbound it. It's blocked out of its corner, wide open. Up. Got it! It's over! Bogey beats Milwaukee! Oh, my, oh, my. Welcome to Utah! I was like a kid in a candy shop when I saw it. It was, it was, it was happy as hell. Great, great atmosphere once again. It was, was playoff, playoff crowd, so it's just amazing to have them over there. What a great moment that was. Now to college football. The coaches pull on AP Top 25 updated. The Utes stay put at number nine, and the coaches number eight in the AP. Oregon moved up one. And Minnesota, after knocking off fifth-ranked Penn State yesterday, moved up 10 spots from 17th to seventh, LSU number one, Ohio State, and Clemson round out the top three. Alabama only drops from second to fourth after losing at home to LSU. Well, the college football playoff rankings will be updated Tuesday night. After coming in at number eight, the Utes very much in the playoff conversation. Now after the bye week, they turn their focus to the final three games of the regular season starting Saturday night at 8 p.m. against UCLA. There's several reasons why the Utes have found themselves in this great position. The play of Tyler Huntley is one of them. Their senior captain has taken his game to another level this year. He's one of the elite quarterbacks in college football, and the numbers back that up. Fifth in the nation in completion percentage and pass efficiency. Fifth in ESPN's quarterback rating. First in the nation in completion percentage on third down at 76.9%. Snoop doesn't like to talk about himself, so I asked Zach Moss why he's been so good. I mean, he started in the spring, you know, by just taking his uh, body weight seriously, you know, and. Uh, 
that all started, and he's seen things just uh, transpire from there, you know. And, uh, you know, guys, we always believed in him. We always going to make plays for him and things like that. But, uh, I mean, when a guy is pretty much playing on one leg and just being a warrior for this team, you know, uh, and fighting for the dreams that everyone on this team has, I mean, it's just remarkable. I mean, it's definitely one of the best to ever play here. Well, Huntley, Moss, and the Utes are ranked in the top 10 and in the driver's seat in the Pac-12 South. They aren't content with their performance so far. They believe they could get better. Is it hard for them to find areas where they can get better? Nope. One of the top five efficient quarterbacks in the country. I know you don't like to talk about yourself. I'm not even doing that good. <laughs> That's how I look at it. How do you think personally you can get better with four or five games left? Uh, it's a lot of, it's a lot of, we was down 14-3. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot of it's a lot what we could get better on, and, um, and we know that, and we're going to fix that. There's a lot of things that we can do better. Um, this game wasn't by far our, our best game. We have not really played our most complete game from top to bottom, and uh, we're still looking to do that. So hopefully coming up this second bye week, um, we could do that going out here uh, and be back in front of our fans. The journey to an 8-1 start hasn't been easy. They've dealt with their share of adversity. They could have pointed fingers after the head-scratching loss to USC. They could have fallen apart when they fell behind 14-3 in Seattle. That never happened, and Kyle Whittingham explains why. We just have an outstanding chemistry this year. In some years you have it, some years it's not as much. And so it's something you can't really control it, but you can certainly encourage you know, being a great teammate and loving each other and, and that type of thing. But, but just because you encourage it doesn't mean it always happens. And then there is the Utah defense. It has certainly been elite. And when you take a deep dive in the numbers, you realize a case could be made that no one is better. Who has the best defense in college football? You can make a case for the Utah Utes. No one in the country is better at stopping the run. Led by All-America candidate Lecky Fotu, the Utes are first in rush defense, allowing just 56 yards per game. Opponents average just 2.4 yards per carry. They held USC to 13 yards rushing. They held Cal to 23 yards rushing and just 83 yards of total offense. They gave the Bears their first shutout in 20 years. They held Washington to just 53 yards rushing and just one yard net rushing in the second half. The Utes are third in total defense, fourth in third down conversion percentage defense, seventh in scoring defense, and ninth in first downs allowed. They've held four opponents to 10 or fewer points. They allowed just 44 second half points in the first nine games of the season. Utah is the first team to shut out its opponent in the first half of three consecutive Pac-12 games in a season since 1991. And they've scored four touchdowns. A dominant defense is why Utah is a top 10 team and a college football playoff contender. Newsflash, they're a good football team. On the other hand, for BYU, it has been a bit of a roller coaster this season, from the ups of beating Tennessee and USC to the downs of dropping back-to-back -back contests against Toledo and South Florida. But now the Cougars, they're trending back upward and sit just one win from bowl eligibility. The fifth win of the year last night against Liberty featured Baylor Romney, the third quarterback to start a game for the Cougars this season. He completed 23 of 33 passes, 262 yards, and three touchdowns. The Cougars admit they haven't always been perfect over this three-game win streak, but they'd rather have the W than the alternative. Yeah, we've been working so hard um, ever since that USF loss, and we've really come together as a team, uh, defense, offense, special teams. It's made us closer. It feels good. I mean, winning is obviously way better than losing, and just the morale of the team is <coughs> so much better. Everyone, everyone feels good, but yeah, there's definitely uh, some improvement that we need to fix. Now, the play of the game was the double pass. Micah Simon's connection with Matt Bushman for the touchdown in the first half. That had Coach Sataki joking after the game. They've already started three QBs this season. Maybe Micah's ready for the job. He's campaigning for a quarterback job, too. He wants to compete for the quarterback job. He says his rating is pretty good right now as a QB, going back to his high school days. So You threw a touchdown, right? Threw for a touchdown? So Micah wants to remind you that he threw for one, too. So he's you're two for two and one touchdown. All right, so Micah dials back into his high school QB days, throws the TD. That play worked, but later in the game, BYU reached into the bag of tricks for that double reverse flea flicker, a play that we saw work against Boise State. This time it was picked off. They also had a, fail, a failed fake field goal. After the game, Coach Sataki was asked if he needs to scale back on the trick plays. 
electric Jerry. place. <laughs> So, was that, was that prayer what do you mean? Like, you, you don't do the fake field goal, and what else did you not like? Oh, the double reverse, the reverse. Flicker that was picked off. It's all right. It's okay. You guys want us to be aggressive, and now you're, you're Jay, you're killing me. <laughs> Talking out both sides of your mouth here now, right? <laughs> so then it's like, where's next week? Where's all the trick plays? How come there's no trick plays? Come on, man. This guy do for a touchdown. It's a great job. We, we have a lot of things that we can do, and I'm looking forward to executing at a high level, and that means trick plays and regular plays and all that stuff. Aberly for the game winner. That is the first time the Aggies have won a game with a last-second field goal since Brad Bone did it against North Texas in 1998. Eberle's leg. And Jordan Love's arm keep the Aggies Mountain West Championship hopes alive. I can't believe Jordan Nathan made that catch. That toss was insane. How did he catch it? Love breaks out of a slump in the 37-35 win over Fresno State. 30 of 39 for 388 yards. Two touchdowns, no interceptions. Aggies host Wyoming Saturday. Weaver State got a big win yesterday over North Dakota to improve to 8-2, but it came at a cost. Running back Josh Davis left the game early with a concussion. Not going to find out for a few days if he'll be available or not for a big road game this weekend at number five ranked Montana, a game that could decide the Big Sky Championship. All right, we still have plenty more coming your way. The college basketball season is upon us. How the 17th ranked Aggies got the season tipped off. That's coming up next. The college basketball season opened Tuesday, and if week one is any indication, this is going to be a wild year of college hoops in the state of Utah. Let's start with the 17th ranked Utah State Aggies. They almost opened the season with an embarrassing home loss to Montana State. Give the Bobcats credit. They played out of their mind. Harold Frey scored 34 points. Aggies down late in the second half when newcomer Alfonso Anderson sparked a 10-0 run. He and Justin Bean both had 13 points. Brock Miller would bury a dagger late and Sam Merrill tied a school record making 17 free throws, 28 points for Sam and to come from behind win. We'll take it, it wasn't pretty. This was a good reminder to us tonight that, hey, every night teams are gonna bring it. Um, <clears throat> but I think we have the right guys in place where, you know, sometimes we're not gonna play very well like we did tonight. I think a lot of what happened tonight was first game of the year. Lots of turnovers, missed open shots, missed open layups, and we just gotta know that can't, can't take any nights off, so we gotta bring it every night. All right, the Aggies, maybe they had opening night jitters in front of the big crowd of the Spectrum, but, you know, even the building had a little bit of uh, jitters, too. The lights go out late in the game as Alfonso Anderson is shooting free throws. Everyone's like, what is going on? But here, how about this? It didn't seem to phase him at all. Knocks him down. Uh, some key buckets there, and the Aggies win. Oh, man, I, <laughs> that, one, that one messed me up a little bit. I didn't know if I should shoot it, and they, I didn't know if they would have counted it or not, so that one kind of messed me up, but... And then obviously knocking down those free throws, even when the light went out. <laughs> we tried to ice our own guy. You heard that right. The Aggies led by as many as 52 Friday night against the Weber State Wildcats. Completely different looking team after Tuesday. Weber State playing without their star, Jarek Harding. Had no answer for Justin Bean and the Aggies. Bean playing with energy, 18 points, 9 rebounds. And he did that after having surgery on his mouth after Tuesday's game. Yeah, I got an elbow to the face right above my two teeth in my front, in front of my mouth. And so we uh, got that surgically repaired, and they're back in. And now I'm, now I'm in high school again with the braces. So it's a good look, I think. That's what my mom says. So. That guy, he literally, we talk about wrestling a lot. That guy's like the ultimate warrior. You know, you remember that guy? He's just got to get a few strings around his biceps. <laughs> got to keep that smile intact, right? Well, the running Utes enter the 2019-20 season with 11 new players on the roster. 15 of the 17 total players on the team are either freshmen or sophomores. So you'd log logically expect their share of bumps and bruises as they go through some growing pains, right? Well, in the season opener, on the road, against a Nevada Wolfpack program that's been to the NCAA tournament each of the past three seasons, the Utes looked pretty good, especially in the second half. The game was tied with less than seven minutes to go. Utah went on an 11-2 run and held off the pack to start the season with a five-point win. And that rolled over to a historic performance at the Huntsman Center on Friday night. 
Utah beat Mississippi Valley State 143 to 49. The 94 point win is the largest margin of victory against a Division I opponent in the NCAA since the tournament was introduced in the 1938-39 season. Nine players scored in double figures for the Utes in the win. Two players, both uh, Gotch and Ryan Jones had triple doubles. All right, you know who's going to be a surprise this year? Southern Utah. Todd Simons put together a talented team. Boy, are they off to a good start. They crushed Bethesda in their opener. Harrison Butler with an impressive putback. This guy's electric. And Utah State transfer John Knight and his red hair had 14 in the win. Then the Thunderbirds go on the road and stun Nebraska the Big Ten. Dre Marine hit a big three with two minutes left to give the Thunderbirds the lead. They led by three with time running out when Nebraska's Jervé Green ties it at the buzzer. This game went to double overtime, and the Thunderbirds didn't crack. Harrison Butler dunked Southern Utah within one with 45 seconds left. Then with two seconds left, Cameron Aluyaten gives Southern Utah 79-78 lead. It turned out to be the game winner. A huge win for the program. And we didn't forget the Cougars. They opened up the season against Cal State Fullerton at the Marriott Center. Alex Barcelo scored 17 points in his BYU debut, making three of four three-pointers. TJ Haas also had 17. As a team, they shot 45% from three-point range and had 25 points off the bench in a 76-58 win. But then the Cougars welcomed San Diego State to Provo on Saturday afternoon. We knew the Cougars would have some challenges in these first nine games without Yoli Childs. The Aztecs dominated the boards, 43 rebounds to BYU's 27. The Cougars did go on a huge 18-2 run to start the half and take the lead, but they let it slip away for their first loss of the season. It disappointed that there were some things we couldn't, uh, you know, we kind of knew staring, staring it in the face, and, and we weren't quite uh, smart enough to figure a couple things out talking about me. Um, but I was super proud of my, of my, of my guys' uh, fight, and um, we just have to get better. We were getting good looks. It just, you know, down the stretch, some, some weren't falling. We needed to get to the free throw line. Southern Utah at the Marriott Center on Wednesday. All right, before Saturday, the last time San Diego State came to Provo was 2011. BYU fans will never forget this. Remember that night, Jimmer versus Kawhi, two top 10 teams, no empty seat in the Marriott Center. It was nuts. It was bonkers. It seemed like a great opportunity to break out the highlights in this week's archive. Let's turn back the clock, although not too far. It was the biggest <laughs> showdown in Mountain West history, and the ninth-ranked Cougars would win this game. Jimmer was 14 of 24 shooting. He had 43 points. Yes, that is Kawhi Leonard. The Cougars outscored Kawhi and the Aztecs 41-27 in the second half. Kawhi had 22 and 15 in the loss. Jimmer pounding his chest. That's one of those images. And then at the end, you see this big sea yeah, of BYU people. fans at the end down there on the court. That was a special moment. All right, this upcoming weekend, some new state champs will be crowned in 2A and 3A high school football. And we're down to the final four in both the 5A, 4A, and 6A classifications. So how did we get to that point? Well, maybe this will give you an idea. It's the Game Night Live highlight reel.
great clips of the week. All right, a double pass, then a lateral to win a high school football game. This is in South Carolina. It's not done yet. Look at this. I've never seen that before. Oh. He's going to go on to score. That is improv right there. Well, the Beaver football team headed to the state championship game thanks to plays like this. Are you kidding me? Off the back, between the legs, it gets picked off. I mean, look at that. Wow, Ooh. he just scoops it off from the ground and basically catches it with his legs. Jordan Nathan, how did you do this? And he paid a price afterwards, but man, okay, so for Jordan Love to put the ball right yeah. there in between two defenders is amazing. Yeah. And for Jordan Nathan to make this catch makes it even better. What a play Aggies get the win at Fresno. Everyone's favorite one of the hey. old man, Alex Caruso, channeling his inner Tom Chambers, the two-handed dunk down the lane. At least I, I need more Caruso bald-headed jams. <laughs> Sabri oh, here's uh, Trey Young teaching the old man LaMarcus Aldridge some new tricks. Whoop. Oh. And then the pass. Oh, my goodness. And then the finish for the dunk. Trey Young is fantastic. How, this, about, how about this? Oregon Sabrina Ionescu with the range from the logo. And how I about mean, this? Oregon beat the U.S. women's national team. <laughs> wow. And how about some, we leave you with some UFC knockouts. This never gets old. Good night. Love MMA.